Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome again to the Sanctuary of Redeemer Lutheran Church. This video is the worship service for May 10th, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Also, of course, Mother's Day. And the service will be based on setting three of the divine service in our Lutheran service book hymnal. We turn at this time to our opening hymn, At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing. Drowns the foe, Alleluia. Praise we Christ, whose blood was shed, Paschal victim, Paschal bread. With sincerity and love, eat we manna from above, Alleluia. Mighty victim from the sky, hell's fierce powers beneath you lie. You have conquered in the fight, you have brought us life and light, Alleluia. Now no more can death appall, now no more the grave enthrall. You have opened paradise, and your saints in you shall rise, Alleluia. Easter triumph, Easter joy, this alone can sin destroy. From sin's power, Lord, set us free, newborn souls in you to be. Alleluia. Spirit, guide through all our days, three in one, your name we praise, Alleluia. Amen. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Therefore, grant to your people that they may love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this age, our hearts may ever be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter is taken from the sixth and seventh chapters of Acts. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, a man full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. Who, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is taken from the second chapter of first Peter <clears throat> like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good as you come to him 
a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and that is enough. That will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join in our sermon hymn, The Strife is O'er, The Battle Done. Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the first reading appointed for today from the sixth and seventh chapters of the book of Acts, especially these words. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the text. Stephen, in our text for today, accuses the Jewish leaders of some pretty serious crimes. Stephen, as we read, was one of the seven that were chosen to help in the distribution to the widows. There was some disparity between some of the widows and rather than have the apostles wait on tables and help out with that and 
no longer devote themselves to the ministry of the word, as we read, the apostles said to the people, pick out some helpers, seven men who will help with this distribution of food so that then we can devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So that's what they did. They picked out the seven whose names we read earlier, one of which was Stephen. And Stephen apparently was someone who was not only good at waiting on tables, but he also had some pretty remarkable gifts as well. It says he was full of grace and power and was doing great signs and wonders among the people. As Jesus mentioned in the gospel reading for today that as since he was going to the Father that his followers would do even greater signs than Jesus himself was doing and so was fulfilled the very words of our Lord in the life of Stephen in all the signs and wonders that he was doing. But of course, this caught the attention of some of the people, probably then out of jealousy. A group of people from a synagogue that was mostly foreigners from another country, this took place in Jerusalem, the Jewish headquarters, but there was a synagogue in Jerusalem where foreign Jews could come and worship. And so several of these Jews then began disputing with Stephen. And as we read elsewhere, as we read in the part that, the part we did not read, they could not overcome his wisdom. They just uh, tried and tried to overcome what Stephen was saying and doing, but they could not. So then they started a riot. They started trouble and agitating. And this eventually then led to Stephen appearing before the Jewish council, the Jewish high priests. And then when he appears before them, he accuses them of some pretty serious sins. Let me remind you of what Stephen said of them. He said they were stiff-necked as their forefathers had been in the Old Testament. Now stiff-necked is just another word for being stubborn. And there's not anything particularly sinful about being stubborn. Uh, most of the time when people don't th do things we want them to do, we call them stubborn and not in a very kind way. But in this case, it was stiff-necked with regard to God. That whatever God tried to tell them to do, they were just always resisting what God wanted them to do. And so it was stubbornness and being stiff-necked in that sense with things related to God. Then he says they were uncircumcised in heart and ear. And that's a pretty serious accusation because circumcision was their identity as Jewish men. They were, everyone that Stephen is talking to here had been physically circumcised and it was a big deal for the Jewish people. But he says you are uncircumcised in heart and ear. In other words, their religion and their faith what really wasn't in their heart. They, it was just a matter of show and only outwardly. So they were uncircumcised in heart and ear where it really mattered. Next, he accuses them of resisting the Holy Spirit. Never a good idea to resist any of the three members of the Holy Trinity. He points out that their ancestors had persecuted the prophets, and they especially had attacked the prophets who foretold the coming of the righteous one, namely Jesus. And then he says to the Jews and reminds them that they had betrayed and murdered the righteous one, namely Jesus. These were, after all, the very same people who had convinced Pontius Pilate to have Jesus crucified. And then finally he says, you had received the law. And that was a gr another of the great blessings of the Jewish people. God had given them his own laws, but they did not keep the laws. And so these are the accusations that Stephen is giving against these Jewish leaders. And, and Stephen was not just making up these charges. They were all true. They were guilty of doing what, they, what Stephen said. Stephen was not just throwing accusations at them like sometimes happens, just hoping that something would stick so that he could get the upper hand. No, everything that Stephen said that they were guilty of, they were indeed guilty of. And he was saying it out in front of everyone. 
This was not a private setting. He was telling everyone who would listen, these guys are guilty of all these terrible things. So then it's no wonder that they got upset, they got angry. It says they ground their teeth, gnashed their teeth. They covered their ears. They just couldn't hear another word. And then they rushed together at Stephen. They did not wait as they had with Jesus. They didn't wait for a trial and turn him over to Pontius Pilate for a trial and then a condemnation. No, they acted themselves as judge and jury and executioner dragging him out of the city and stoning him to death. But the fact of the matter is, even though these sins of the Jews were very serious, they could all be forgiven. Every one of them, even though the things they had done were so serious, if they had just repented and turned to Jesus, they would have been forgiven. Stephen knew that. And that's why he was so courageous. And that was why he was willing to stand up and speak the truth. Because he knew that if they would just repent, they would be forgiven. And so then what were his final words as we just read? Stephen, as he is ready to die, he looks up into heaven. He sees the heavens opened. He sees Jesus standing there at the right hand of God. And then he says, Lord, receive my spirit, the same words that Jesus had spoken when he died on the cross. And then his very last words, he says, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Do not hold this sin against them. Stephen was willing to forgive them for everything they had done, all the horrible things they had done to Jesus and the fact that they were even stoning him to death. And that is the good news, the gospel, that for Jesus' sake, God does not hold our sins against us. That's what Stephen knew, and that, were, that was the word, his dying words, as he was being stoned to death. That God would not hold this sin against them. Peter speaks of this in our epistle reading for today. He talks about Jesus, who was a cornerstone, chosen and precious. Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Whoever believes in Jesus will not be put to shame. No matter what kind of shameful things anyone has done, whoever believes in Jesus will not be put to shame. And then later also in the epistle reading, Peter says that God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That once we were not a people, once we had not received mercy, but now we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. And that's what gave Stephen his courage and his strength in this time when he gave his life as a martyr for his faith. It also says that the witnesses of Stephen's stoning laid their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. Saul was the man who later became the Apostle Paul. And Paul is another beautiful example of how God does not hold our sins against us. Paul did horrible things, just as bad as these people who killed Stephen. It says he went from house to house trying to round up believers, put them into prison, and if any of them ended up being killed, he was fine with that, as he was with the death of Stephen. And yet God forgave him for all the murderous things that Saul did and did not hold his, their, uh, any of Saul's sins against him, but forgave him, and Saul went on to be one of the greatest of all the apostles. That is why, at the beginning of this text, when we first read about Stephen, the, dis the apostles were adamant, we can't give up the ministry of the word to wait on tables. Now it is important to help those who are hungry. The church has done this from day one, helping out those who are hungry. And we're still doing it. We're still helping people who have needs, whether it's hunger, clothing, or anything else. The church still does that, and it is still a vitally important ministry. But we dare not neglect this gospel. 
the good news that for the sake of Christ, God does not hold our sins against us. We need to make sure that there's always someone in our midst, we call them typically pastors, that is called by God, appointed specifically for that job of ministering of the word and proclaiming that gospel to everyone, that in Jesus, who, whoever believes in Jesus will never be put to shame because God will not hold their sins against them. So how would you feel if someone like did, did what Stephen did to those Jewish leaders? Started spewing out your sins in front of everybody. I know if someone did that to me, I'd want to cover my ears. I'd probably be grinding my teeth. I would not enjoy this at all. I would try to do everything possible to, to get it to stop. But God, whose opinion is the one that really counts, after all, he know, already knows everything. So everything we've ever done is already known to him. So if uh, someone starts spouting off with our sins, it's not going to be news to God. He already knows it all. But as I said, he does not hold that against us. For the sake of Christ, we too are forgiven of all of our sins. And then, since God is not holding our sins against us, he wants us then not to hold other people's sins against them either. Not only have we sinned against God and God has forgiven us, but there are times when other people will sin against us, do things they never should do. And so when that happens, we need to remember the story of Stephen. Since God does not hold our, our sins against him, we need to forgive and be merciful to other people and not hold their sins against them. As Jesus says in the Lord's Prayer, and as we pray, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. He then adds at the end of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, for if you give others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others your, their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And then, as Peter also says in the epistle reading for today, God wants us then to tell others this good news. As someone has put it, God not only gave us mercy, he also gave us mouths. As Peter says, we are to proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And to do that, he has given us mouths. First, he gives us mercy, forgiving all of our sins and not holding them against us. And then he gives us mouths, mouths that we can use then to proclaim this good news to others. Now, when you do that with the mouth that God has given you, I'm, I might caution and say, maybe don't take the same approach as Stephen. Stephen was pretty direct. And as I said, it's no big surprise that they ground their teeth and closed their ears at all the stuff that P Stephen was saying against them about their sins and saying it out in front of everybody maybe is not the best approach to take. But still we do need to proclaim with our mouths the mercies of our God. He's given us mercy and he's given us mouths to proclaim that mercy to other people. They need to hear it, that God does not hold their sins against them. So here again with this early Christian congregation, we see how they are organized. A Christian congregation must never neglect the ministry of the Word of God. For it is in the Word of God that we hear the good news that God, for the sake of Christ, does not hold our sins against us, but for Christ's sake has mercy upon us. That those who believe in Jesus will never be put to shame. And as we proclaim that with the mouths that God has given us, we share that with other people that they may be called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. 
We turn again to the liturgy of setting three and join in singing the offertory. This is the time of the service when we would normally collect the offering. If God moves your heart to do so, we invite you to send your offerings to Redeemer at 1054 Truman Avenue in Owatonna, or you can donate online at RedeemerOwatonna.org. We join together in the Sanctus. Blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. In our special prayers, of course, we will include a prayer of thanksgiving to God for all the blessings he has brought to us through our earthly mothers. Let us pray. <clears throat> o Lord Jesus, the Son of Righteousness, who came forth from the dark night of death, whose majesty surpasses the brightest light of dawn, by your gracious presence enable us to contemplate the glories of your resurrection from the dead. O conqueror of death and captain of our salvation, the battle and the victory are yours, but you share your victory with us and have made us partakers of your triumph. You are the first fruits of those who sleep. Because you live, we shall live also. When you overcame the sharpness of death, you opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Therefore, we are glad and rejoice in your goodness and bless your holy name. O Prince of Life, now comfort us with the forgiveness of our sins and abide with us always so that in all our conflicts we may keep our Easter joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through your power resting upon us, may we overcome the world and the terrors of death. And when you return in glory to judge the world, Change our lowly bodies that we may be like your glorious body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless your inheritance, O Lord, and govern your people, lifting them up forever. Defend and maintain your church till the end of days. Give us shepherds who will care for your flock and let all pastors and teachers hold fast to the true words of faith and love which are in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to our rulers and judges wisdom, justice, and fear of your name, that they may establish and maintain peace in our land, 
and let righteousness flourish. Regard in compassion all those who are oppressed by lawlessness, all who are suffering for the sake of the truth, all who are surrounded by temptation, all who are sinking under the weight of disease, and all who are troubled by the fear of death. In all our needs, be our hope of glory, so that the testing of our faith may result in honor and praise for your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us grace, Lord, to trust you during this time of the pandemic. In your mercy, put an end to this scourge that afflicts us. Grant relief and healing to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn the loss of loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain our health care workers, our emergency responders, our government officials and medical researchers. Give them strength and protect them from all harm as they work to care for us and maintain order. Cause your people to respond with care and compassion to all who are affected by this catastrophe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this Mother's Day, we give thanks for all the blessings you have brought to our lives through our earthly mothers. We thank you especially for all those mothers who have taught their children to know you as their Lord and Savior. We especially pray for the mothers of young children and the mothers of unborn children. Give them strength as their responsibilities often bring them great tiredness as they fulfill their duties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now to you who is able to keep us from falling and to present us blameless in your presence with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, power and dominion, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. We join together in the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We join in our closing hymn, Now Thank We All Our God.
we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. Oh, wondrous things has done in whom his world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given. them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be ever. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.